Welcome to another episode of Gymnasticsville. I'm your host, Midnight Robin, and today is going to be an exciting show. It is clear blue skies here in Norman, Oklahoma. I'm here with three-time National Coach of the Year for the University of Oklahoma Women's Gymnastics Team, KJ Kindler. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Awesome. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here. All right. So we're going to start with a few off-topic questions just so we can all get to know you a little bit better. Um, what is your favorite vegetable? Oh my goodness. I love Brussels sprouts okay. and cauliflower. Cauliflower. Yeah. All right. Those are the two I love the most. Okay. Um, <laughs> what's a pet peeve of yours? Ooh. Wow. That's a, that's a big one. I hate it when people chomp on their gum. Okay. That's a big pet okay. peeve of mine. That just that sound? That, yes. Okay. That like, yeah. Yes, yeah. And I would say that that's one of my top ones, but I, ha- I have a lot. Okay. Okay. All right. So I've been watching some of your floor routines, mm-hmm. uh, and you choreograph them. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So this has nothing to do with that, but I know you like dance. So yes. what's your favorite dance move of all time? Oh, my gosh. Dance move? Yeah, dance move. If you ever just felt like, you know, dance therapy and dance or, you know. Uh, My favorite dance move is when Prince dropped to the ground and popped back up, like, seamlessly. And he just, and it looked like he was landing on a pillow and just, I love that. Prince. Yeah, I love Prince. Okay. He's my favorite. Okay, Prince. Good to know. (laughs) Good to know. All right. Um, Favorite inspirational movie? Hmm. I know it's tough, so if you want to pick like one or two or your top two or top three, but hmm. you know, what's what, you know, could be sports related or. Honestly, like, I love Rudy. I love the story behind Rudy. Rudy. I know that's so cliche, right? No, it's okay. That's actually one of my favorite <laughs> movies. It's cliche, but it's, it's about. You know, honestly, a non-scholarship athlete that oh. just loves the sport, working his butt off. I love that. I love that story. Wow. Well, that's great. Okay, so. How did you get started into coaching? How did that journey start for you? Honestly, I started probably when I was in high school. I did um, I did choreography for myself in my club. I assisted in my club with coaching. Okay. And when I uh, went to college, I coached at the club there. I was a walk-on, and I coached at night at the club. Back then, you could do that, and um, we had a little team, very young, yep. just like compulsory level, and okay. I was their coach. Wow, wow, that's great. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you've been with the program for the last 12 years. Mm-hmm. Um, you've done a remarkable job. you won three national championships. Um, you know, before you got here, in my opinion, the University of Oklahoma women's team was a little mediocre. I mean, what what led to that? What's kind of your coaching philosophy in, in bringing Oklahoma to such a winning program just, you know, over the last 12 years? Well, um, I, I wouldn't have called Oklahoma mediocre uh, coming in. I think the talent was incredible that was here. The recruits that chose to come here before I got here um, had great accolades to their name. Um, but learning how to work together as a team when you come to college is very different than being a, a singular elite athlete. And so uh, cultivating a, a team atmosphere was probably one of our top things. And in a team atmosphere, everyone's treated equally and um, kind of getting rid of, you know, any sort of imbalance there was. And it was a slow transition. I, I couldn't come in and just wipe the slate clean and start gotcha. over fresh. Yeah. It had to happen slowly over time because I had seniors who, quite frankly, didn't, didn't ask for me. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. they, exactly. they came they here. Just, yes, yep, they yep, came yep. here under mm-hmm. a completely different regime and a different mentality and different philosophy. Mm-hmm. So um, they didn't ask for me, and so the the transition was baby steps gotcha. every year. And um, the talent, like I said, the talent was great. And and what we've been able to do is cultivate a really strong team atmosphere, yep. and uh, and really an organized planning 
of workout. You know, our preparation is methodical. We plan every minute of it. Um, it's it's not much off the cuff kind gotcha. of thing. It's it's well thought out. So I think putting that plan into place and that preparation made a difference. Yep. At the end of the day, but I mean, it took it took time to get us to where we are right now. There's no doubt. Twelve years, yeah, as you mentioned. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I did a bit of coaching myself, mm. uh, girls, women's gymnastics, and you know, over the last you know few months, just you know, watching you know your program and your team. Uh, there's one event that just that just sticks out for me is is your beam team. I mean, they look so confident out there. The routines flow. I mean, when I was coaching, it was hard for me to get girls to stay on the beam. And it seems like, <laughs> you, you know, your women, your team stay on the beam and they're just so confident in what they're doing. How do you, how do you kind of get them to do that? Or what's, what's your philosophy with, with beam? Well, I'd say with beam choreography, my philosophy is rhythm. You know, having great rhythm. You don't see a lot of pauses in our routines. You don't see a lot of posing in our routines. They're moving from... Um, dance move to dance move, hopefully fluently, and, and they look elegant yeah. up there. There's a rhythm to what they're doing. Um, we work very hard on having very limited pauses throughout that routine, less time to think, gotcha. quite honestly. And, and we work a lot of basics yeah. because bounce beams about alignment. And alignment in your basics will equal success in your big skills. Gotcha. So that's kind of my philosophy. And um, you know, I that's just the style I like. Lots of different choreographers have different styles yeah. on beam. You can see a lot of posing or sharp movements and then slow movements. This is just my style and what I like and, and what I think is pleasing to the eye. Gotcha. And, you know, and just more, more on the beam, because I feel like, you know, I'm a male gymnast. So beam, I look at beam as almost being like palm horse. But mm-hmm. yet, you know, when you, um, for the women, how you usually you finish on the road, mm-hmm. you finish in on beam. Mm-hmm. And uh, I spoke to a few alumni from Oklahoma, and they were like, yeah, don't worry about it. Beam is, they have beam. So is that kind of your philosophy, too, is that rhythm also helps you under pressure? Mm-hmm. Because ending on beam is not easy to mm-hmm. do, I mean, especially when other teams end on, like, an event like full, which for me seems a little maybe easier under the pressure to hit on mm-hmm. that, you know? Well, yeah, we we definitely grow that mentality over the course of the preseason. Um, I tell them they're the best all the time. They believe they're the best. I mean, that is a huge part of having that confidence gotcha. in those moments, those pressure moments. If you're coach and, and you know that you're the best, you can't, it won't, it won't waver. You yeah. won't freak. You're calm. You know, you've got it. I mean, I think that starts, you know, in August when I'm, when I'm making up assignments and doing things like that. I mean, I'm always telling them, you know, y'all are the best, yeah. you know, and, and they believe it. They truly believe it. And when they go into those moments, they know they're good in those moments. The history of being good in those moments yeah. helps them be more confident. Even if it's a team three years before they got there, like you said, yeah. they're known for being quite steady on beam and quite steady under pressure on beam. They just kind of fall into that cliche and fall into that category. And they, Oh, I guess I'm, doesn't matter where I was before. Yeah. I guess now I'm steady Eddie on beam, you know, and hopefully they let go of any, you know, former hiccups they had or anything like that. And, and when they come to this college environment, they change their mindset. It is a complete mindset to, to know that, you know, going into beam, you're just going to nail it. And the last two meets have been a testament to that, you know, against Florida and UCLA going in tied. You know, you never want to be on the road going tied to beam, you know? <laughs> exactly. That's not yeah. okay. necessarily the best scenario. Okay. <laughs> but that's the scenario we went in with, and they did not even flinch about it. You know, they were like, okay, we got to get some nine nines here. And yeah. then they went after nine nines instead of trying to stay on the beam. The biggest mistake people make is trying to stay on. Try to stay on. You, you know you're staying on if you're at Oklahoma. You know you're staying on. It's just whether you're going to do that perfect set or maybe have a little flinch here and there, yeah. but you're not coming off. Wow. Wow, that's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's a great philosophy. Now, we have a lot of young listeners um, that are aspiring to be NCAA athletes. Um what are you looking for? What does it take to be an NCAA D- Division One gymnast? Yeah, well, I think different people would answer that question differently. Okay. And if I could say anything to those listeners, this is what I would say. Um, if you're not level 10 by the time you're in sixth grade, it's okay. 
Gotcha. You don't have to be a level 10 in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And a lot of these athletes, because scholarships are going so early, mm-hmm. think that they have to be there. And if they're not, they give up, you know? And, and that's just not the case. To me, um, level 9 athletes can be NCAA athletes. Maybe it's one event that they focus on. Maybe they have a forte, like they are super powerful and they can vault through the roof. But bars, yikes, you know? Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't go to college and be the best vaulter in the country. I just think um, that a lot of parents and athletes are scared of not not getting the scholarship or going to the school that they want. But the fact is, if you love gymnastics, there'll be an opportunity for you. And if you keep working through your senior year, there'll be an opportunity for you. Um, there's there's lots of huge schools that have scholarships for seniors right now. And then I think the biggest mistake is giving up at too young of an age. Gotcha. And gotcha. so, you so know, to keep, be... Keep it going, basically. So a level 9, yeah. a level 10, or yeah. an elite. I mean, they could, they could all be. I, I wouldn't even take level 8 out of the out of the equation because you never know what they're going to grow up into. You know, level 8 at, at 6th, 7th, 8th grade, they can become a 9, a 10 by the time they're a senior. And then... You know, maybe beam and floor are strong or this and that. You know, you don't have to be an all-arounder in college. Yep. Um, and so the, that that's the beauty of it. And I would also say this. Um, a scholarship doesn't make you um, a person. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. and money isn't what it's all about. And I know it's very hard financially, but if you're going to pay for school, you're going to pay for school anyway. And mm-hmm. walking onto a program can provide you an amazing experience that you couldn't get otherwise. I was a walk-on athlete. Okay. Um, we have rewarded numerous of our walk-on athletes with scholarships because they've blossomed yeah. while they've been here. And and they'll be rewarded for that if that happens. But not only that, they had the experience of their life, you know, and I just I just hope that no one gets discouraged by the that early committing to schools and oh everybody's already committed and you know, I haven't been asked yet, so I'm going to throw in the towel. You know, I just I hope they'll push through that part because there's a lot of big stuff on the other side. Gotcha. I think. Okay. Last few years, you guys have been very, very successful. Back-to-back national champions. Where do you go from here? Or so the question is, how do you keep your team motivated through all this success and over the last few years? Mm-hmm. It's not hard to keep them motivated, quite honestly. They've been to the top, so they know what it feels like to be there, and that's the only place they want to be. Gotcha. You know, once you've, you've been there and you've achieved that, nothing else is quite matches up. But it's honestly, it's the, the whole experience, like I mentioned. There's, not, there's nothing like it. And whether you end up third, second, first, or twelfth, yeah. you have... Um, you have had an amazing experience. You have grown as a person. You have um, depended on one another and created a bond that no one can ever take away. But where would they like to be? They'd like to be at the top. I don't think motivation's an issue for us. We won't always be at the top, gotcha. but we're always going to try to be at the top. Okay, I understand. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about your, your current team. Um, if you had maybe one or two words to describe Maggie Nichols, what would that be? Hmm. She's very inspiring okay. and inspired daily. You don't, uh, again, she's not somebody who needs to be pushed. She pushes herself. I would say she's inspiring. I would also say she's, um, her standards are incredibly high gotcha. for herself, higher than any of her coaching staff would ever set for her. So she's definitely a perfectionist on that level. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so as we're, you know, almost about halfway the mid, midpoint of the season, um, are there any gymnasts on your team currently that you, that you really um, like their progression up to this point? And, you know, we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, Bree Showers is someone who we felt as a freshman she would walk in and make a huge impact. Then she, you know, experienced an injury last year and had to watch, basically. And this this year she's been amazing, just what we thought she would have been last year. Okay. Um, and that's harder to do, I think, in your sophomore season after going through all that, watching, you know, not having that opportunity to come out your sophomore season and, and basically do what you – could have done the year before, not lose motivation, not get complacent. I think um, that's huge. 
So she's been super impressive, and if you watch her gymnastics, it's just it's just elegant gotcha. and and strong and technically really really good. Um, someone else that I would say uh, stands out is Anastasia Webb, um, who has come as a freshman and is doing all around not every meet okay. but um, periodically. She's very unique in that she's graceful but yet powerful. So she has both, and she can still swing bars. Like she's got all the the whole package. Okay. So she's really, I've really seen her grow a lot competitively for sure um, from J.O. Just, just watching her acclimate to this, you know, the crowd situation and all those things. That's huge for freshmen, yeah. you know. They used to compete in front of 200 people and their parents were the most important ones. And now <laughs> they're in front of 10,000 yes. people who are screaming for them to fall for, yeah. <laughs> for sometimes. So they have to handle that. And for a freshman, she's done a remarkable job with that. Um, Brie had the opportunity to watch how that works last year. So it gave her an edge okay. going into this year. Yeah. But Anastasia, this is this is all new for her. But we have um, a lot of other people that are are coming along and looking good. We have a couple that are injured right now okay. who will help us a great deal as we go down the road here. Natalie Brown, Jay Digovea, both of them will come back this season um, and are exceptional yep. on their events. So I feel like there's still a lot of building our team can do. Okay. Um, so right now you guys are ranked first place team in the rankings, first place on vault, first place on balance beam and bars I mean you know are you are you are you um you like where you're at right now at this point in the season I mean I know coaches are very you know guys are very uh what can I say the word I'm looking for you always want more so to speak so Mm -hmm. where do you think your team's at right now at this point in the season yeah I mean this is familiar territory for us we always kind of have the philosophy of coming out hot um, and there'll be dips throughout the season, surely. You know, um, we will change up our lineup, give other people opportunities, things like that. But, but that's going to help us grow. Yeah. Um, so ranking wise, you know, if you were to pay attention to the rankings, yeah, that that's a great place to be right now. Yeah. Um, can we still get better? Yeah. You know, they're they're right now they're competing against themselves every time they go out there. They have they have a sample set of five scores, and they know what they're capable of now. You know, when you go out the first time, you're not really sure what you're capable of. Now they're looking and saying, oh, I can get a 995. I can get a 10. And um, they know what that routine feels like now because they've done these five routines. They know what a 10 feels like. And so, um, you know, we expect they'll just continue to shoot for that. If they try to outdo themselves, there's nothing better they can do. Nice. All right. A few more questions. Mm -hmm. Um, So is there any other matchup? Uh, that you got, that's coming up here in the next, you know, up until NCAA's mm-hmm. and conference that you guys are really looking to, you know, you circling on your board, be like, this is where we want to perform at our best or where it's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, good competition? Honestly, we take all our competition super seriously. I don't think we ever um, underestimate anyone that we compete against. This weekend we have an undefeated Nebraska. Whew, you know, they Nebraska. haven't, yeah. Okay. And then we have Michigan coming into yeah. town, into Norman, an excellent team as well. We go to Alabama on their senior wow. night. I mean, there's nothing easy in the future yeah, <laughs> that no, I, I see. That. And then yeah. we've got Big 12 champions, regionals, nationals. I mean, it's all hard. So, um, and and we never, never take for granted that, you know, we're going to walk away with something. We know we have to earn every bit of it. Yeah. That's not our mentality ever. Um, our team's not... Uh, arrogant in that way you know they know they have to go in there and earn it okay and last question I know you've had a lot of moments here in Oklahoma over the last 12 years three national titles Um, is there any one that um, sticks out more than the others in terms of you know good moments you know well I have to say uh, in 2016 the end of the meet was the most dramatic that we've had, and that made it the most exciting. Uh, in 2014, we tied, okay. um, but it just wasn't the same as being up there by yourself. Gotcha. And in 2016, we were ending on floor, which is always an awesome place yeah. to end. And, and not very often have we gotten that rotation at nationals. And after AJ competed, she was the fifth competitor, while Haley Skamen stepped onto the floor mm-hmm. to do her floor routine. 
the score came up and pushed us to the top of the leaderboard. And she's in her starting pose and wow. the whole team down below is celebrating. The poor girl had to do her whole floor routine knowing we had already won. And I thought to myself, honestly, how free she must have felt. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah. Like we've already won. Like just do, just yeah. enjoy it. It's like and your so, victory lap almost. Yeah, yeah. almost. Yeah. And so it was just so like heartwarming to watch that routine and to watch her be able to just like soak in knowing that we had won. And then at the same time, just do a killer routine and celebrate. And the team felt, you know, a lot of freedom watching that yeah. routine. That moment was really exciting um, and made it really fun at the end. But winning a championship, period, yeah. is an amazing moment. You can't take anything away from it. Every single one has been different and unique. And um, there are days I will never forget. And I'm sure, you know, our athletes will never forget those moments. Awesome. Well, that was a great moment. Thank you for sharing and coming in, KJ. Mm -hmm. And uh, good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you.